Let's look at some trending tickers. Investors plugging into Tesla after CEO Elon Musk made an announcement on X, writing that the company will be unveiling a robo-taxi on August 8th. So for more on this, we're joined by Tasha Kinney, ARK Invest Analyst. Tasha, always great to see you here. Thanks for joining us on a Monday morning. So. I, it, I think by this time we're thinking, okay, August 8th, he must have it down. But we've been told about this, teased about this before uh, in 2020, going back all the time uh, when we were talking, when Elon Musk was talking about a million robo-taxis. So what should we expect on August 8th here in the great reveal? Yeah, I mean, you're absolutely right that, um, you know, one common criticism of Tesla is that they've been talking about robo-taxis for a long time. And the question is, okay, well, where is it? Um, well, I actually think we've seen a lot of progress over the past few years, um, notably in their full self-driving software um, that they released to consumers, you know, and they just they just took that out of beta mode, right, and allowed a lot more people access to the latest version of the software. Um, and what we're seeing in the, the videos that many people are posting online is that it's already possible to complete, you know, nearly full drives um, fully autonomously, right? So there's still someone behind the wheel, you know, they have their hands there just in case. It's not perfect, um, so that, you know, it's not quite perfect yet, uh, but I think that we're closer than ever. And I think that, you know, we take confidence in all the improvements that we've seen in AI over the past uh, few years as well. I mean, that has to help autonomous driving. You know, we do see early elements of some things, you know, some improvements that we've seen from large language models, for instance, bleeding over into the development work that's that's happening for autonomous driving. Um, so we're really more excited than ever. I mean, we think this is going to drive uh, the future value of Tesla when we look out five years. We think it'll be two thirds of the enterprise value in, in five years. So, so we're super excited about it. Can't wait for August. People are starting to think about Tesla again as a car company. I mean, I think that's mm -hmm. what, part of what's happened here in terms of yes. the valuation cut. Mm -hmm. has been people said at one point, oh, this is a tech company, yes. right? right? This is an AI company. This yes. is all sorts of things. Uh, and then there were always these bears saying, well, actually, guys, it's not that at all. It's a car company. Mm -hmm. Now some people are saying, well, maybe it's a car company. What is it? And how, for the valuation to sustain itself and actually uh, to move higher, does it have to be what you just talked about, a robo-taxi company, a AI company, and all, uh, all of the above? It epitomizes the convergence among technologies that we are seeing today. Uh, and the robo-taxi network is not an if, it's a when. It's already happening. Waymo, Waymo is out there, you know, proof of concept. So it is going to happen. Recently, Elon Musk revealed Tesla's next big move for making loads of money. We all remember where we were when the Tesla CEO announced that his company will reveal its long-awaited robo-taxi on the 8th of August this year. But he didn't stop there. In fact, he also talked about how Tesla plans to make money through licensing its FSD software, and while we already knew that this was the goal all along, Elon's plans for the licensing itself are actually quite shocking. So, let's get right into it. But before we do that, if you want to keep up with Tesla's latest updates and keep up with the stock market's latest news, you can follow our Twitter account. We post multiple times daily about the biggest changes and catalysts in the market, so click the follow button if you don't want to miss the newest market updates. Now, back to today's video. Defiance ETF's CEO, and, and Sylvia, what do you think? That, that drop in the first quarter came as a surprise because it's the first time we've seen that since 2020. Yeah, and I think that this is the first time where they have a whole lot of headwinds facing them. So I think that, you know, EV demand has just shrunk. There are fewer people interested in buying these cars, particularly with rates as high as they are. Mm -hmm. And then the company itself has had issues. You know, they had a fire. They have lawsuits. Um, they've had, you know, a, a, a stain to their brand, I think, at this point. And just in general, just the popularity of EVs has slowed down in the near term. I don't think that this is necessarily bad for the longer term, but for the next six to nine months, you know, as a test a shareholder, you might not be super thrilled with where the price is going to go. Part of the concern also has been competition coming in from China, yes. uh, BYD. Is that a threat in this market? I mean, it's a threat they're going to face in China, but is it one that they, you think they eventually face here or not? I don't think it's a threat that they're going to face here for a long time, but China matters a whole lot to Tesla. You know, it's the world's second largest economy. Tesla has had a strong foothold there, and I think that they're going to lose some of their presence there because of BYD. 
But I think, you know, if we kind of take a step back in terms of Tesla, where the future might be bright for them might be in the AI world, you know, the self-driving vehicles, the robo-taxis, if they ever kind of accomplish that, they could potentially get, generate some revenue streams. And also, Tesla has cash, so they've been able to cut the prices of their cars, they've been able to better their margins, improve their supply chains and things like this. So I think that, you know, if you kind of stick it out for the long term and you believe that electric vehicles can grow a little bit more, Tesla will probably remain a winner in this space. It's, it's kind of interesting interesting because that's a theme I'm thinking of for the entire market. Does AI overwhelm or it, can it outshine some of the concerns people have just about if the Fed's not going to cut rates? Yeah, I mean, I, I think there are going to be AI winners and losers, companies like Microsoft and Amazon and Google that do a whole lot of other things that are also going to participate in AI will continue to benefit from that, whether, whether or not there's kind of churn in that theme. But companies like Apple and Tesla that are a little more consumer driven may suffer in the near term on that. But, you know, I do think that AI is, is largely, you know, the, the largest tech innovation opportunity that we have as investors for the next five to 10 years, without a doubt. Ex-user Holmar's blog recently shared a post on how Tesla can license its FSD software. According to the user, Tesla can allow other automakers to integrate the software into any car for free and have the car owner pay for the license's cost or actually charge the automakers for it. In addition to that, Tesla could give out its active safety and basics for free or leverage its supercharger deals by offering the same pricing as Tesla cars for EVs that integrate its FSD software and share their data. Replying to this tweet, Elon stated that Tesla would be happy to do such deals, and this is a clear indication of Tesla's willingness to speed up the acceptance and adoption of fully autonomous vehicles. But this sparked a debate between Tesla investors, especially because Elon is basically saying that he's open to share the FSD technology for free. So, what does this mean for Tesla and Tesla stock? Let's find out. Hello everyone, and welcome back to Investocracy take a pause here ourselves because right. we can't do this profitably. By the way, that's a positive for Tesla, you know, to have the competition doing this. And Tesla's just going full steam ahead. Uh, so I, I do think part of it's economic. Uh, and uh, you can use all these other excuses. But uh, if that is the case, what's going to happen, we believe, during the next five years, and you know that's our investment time horizon, right. we think the cost of an electric vehicle, the average electric vehicle, is going to be cut in half. And uh, Tesla's new block manufacturing uh, techniques and technology, along with AI, are a big right. part of this. How much, and you've been buying yes. on, on this weakness, well, if you, you want to call so it that. So as we were selling when it was around 400 and 350, when it's been cut in half, down 60%, is not the time to run for the heels. If you believe Tesla is going to be in this, we also believe uh, the autonomous taxi network, uh, okay, well, certainly that's what I was the United States. Right now, people are starting to think about Tesla again as a car company. I mean, I think that's mm -hmm. what, part of what's happened here in terms of yes. the valuation cut mm -hmm. has been people said at one point, oh, this is a tech company, yes. right? right? This is an AI company. This yes. is all sorts of things. Uh, and then there were always these bears saying, well, actually, guys, it's not that at all. It's a car company. Mm -hmm. Now, some people are saying, well, maybe it's a car company. What is it? And how, for the valuation to sustain itself and actually uh, to move higher, does it have to be what you just talked about, a robo-taxi company, a AI company, and all, uh, all of the above? It epitomizes the convergence among technologies that we are seeing today. Uh, and the robo-taxi network is not an if, it's a when. It's already happening. Waymo, Waymo is out there, you know, proof of concept. So it is going to happen. And if you've tried version 12.3, FSD, you'll see that Tesla... So this, is, this is the full self-driving mode that we should say is not fully self-driving. Correct, yet. correct. But if you drive, uh, if using it, you will find that it is becoming um, more precise, but also a little more aggressive like a human being would be instead of this, you know, more cautious. Right. So I think we're getting there, yes. But it epitomizes three technologies, robotics, these cars are and will be robots. And of course, he's got the whole human, humanoid robot going as well. Uh, energy storage, autos in the future will be electric. We believe in five years, 75% to 85% of all sales will be electric. Elon Musk once said that full self-driving is probably going to be the biggest step change in asset value in history, explaining that this technology would increase the usability of a vehicle and increase its value. 
So, imagine what would happen when Tesla licenses this revolutionary software to other automakers. This software is still being developed but has significantly improved over the years. Beta testers have at some points reported taking FSD drives with very little to zero interventions, showing the software's capabilities, which, in turn, show that Tesla is very close to perfecting the technology. Now, many investors in Tesla don't like the fact that Elon would be willing to license the software for other automakers for free, but they aren't seeing the bigger picture. You see, offering it for free isn't giving away anything and will actually work in the same way as any supercharger deal Tesla did before. Meaning, customers will pay the fee for the license, just like how they pay a higher fee to use Tesla's superchargers as non-Tesla owners. Tesla would get the cash, and it'd be a win-win situation for Tesla and any automaker it works with. There's also the fact that Tesla would gain access to more data from more vehicles on the road, which will help it solidify its position as the FSD leader as it prepares to launch its robotaxi network. Remember that Tesla's been developing this technology for years and has invested billions of dollars into it, so it's definitely not giving it away for free without getting something in return. That's a misconception. Looking at some stocks on the move, after a difficult week last week, Tesla found some recovery today. CEO Elon Musk announced on X on Friday that the company would unveil its robo-taxi on August 8th. Now, this is the third time in eight years that Tesla promised a robo-taxi. And it comes after a Reuters report on Friday said Tesla was scrapping plans to produce the Model 2 affordable EV. Musk vehemently denied that report, but Tesla shares still closed up almost 5% today. Elon thinks that in the future, building an electric car won't be enough because it'll need to be fully self-driving as well. He had previously said that the key to achieving such high margins in the auto business is FSD, which sets Tesla apart from the competition. This is why Tesla needs to license FSD and share its profits with other EV makers because that would definitely give a massive boost to the industry. Not only that, but it'll help Tesla avoid getting caught up in antitrust cases. Think about it like this, would the government let one company owning a revolutionary FSD software, Robotaxis, and EVs slide without any problem? The answer is probably no, and this brings us to the next question, who will likely be the first to license Tesla's FSD? Our best guess is Ford, and there are several reasons for this. First up, there's the whole supercharger access deal. Remember how Ford shook hands with Tesla to allow their electric vehicles to juice up at Tesla's supercharger stations? That was a big move that showed a willingness to collaborate and break down barriers in the electric vehicle race. Rumors broke recently that Ford has an autonomous vehicle platform in the works, but not many people think the company actually plans to solve autonomy by itself, but it could definitely be intending to license Tesla software. Ford has its own self-driving system called Blue Cruise. However, while this software is decent, it isn't exactly setting the world on fire. Tesla's FSD, on the other hand, is on a whole nother level. And as you probably know, Directly licensing a technology and working with the company that designed it is generally a better way to adopt a technology. After Ford, Rivian could be the next company to come on board since it also has a supercharger agreement with Tesla. Also, Tesla will open up its charging network to General Motors, Volvo, and Polestar EVs in the spring, so there's room for collaboration and licensing deals with almost all major automakers. By licensing its FSD technology, Tesla opens up a new monetization avenue beyond its vehicle and energy product sales, and this can significantly enhance its income, making the company more financially robust, which is, of course, great news for Tesla stock investors. That, you know, again, like there, there are so many, um, there's so much opportunity and so much big themes in AI right now that everybody kind of wants to buy those stocks. So if you look at the ETFs that track those themes, if you look at the single stocks and you buy a couple percentage points back, it's, you know, kind of better than buying at the all time highs. I just think that dollar cost averaging is the way to go, particularly in some of these themes. Um, to your point, it's not a big pullback. I think we can pull back a little bit more. The market kind of ran up pretty quickly since November. Rates are higher than ever. Oil is spiking a little bit. We have to ride this out. Um, areas outside of AI that you're watching at this point? 
Yeah, so I'm I mean, I'm pretty tech happy, <laughs> let's call it. So I think the next AI for me is quantum computing. So I'm starting to look at those stocks, you know, whether it's stocks like Rigetti or Form Factor, IonQ, even companies like IBM and, and Amazon that are just investing in that space there. Um, you're starting to see some growth. You're starting to see some investment, whether it's from the U.S. government or China. Um, you know, I, I think that that's going to be kind of the, the next chat GPT moment is going to come around quantum computing. I also like healthcare. These weight loss drugs are obviously taking off and we have that larger than ever baby booming population that's that's aging and going to consume services. A lot of these companies like Lilly and Novo have other drugs. So do I'm you that worry too. that any of those stocks are at risk? I mean, they've had huge demand for the weight loss drugs, but there's also a pretty big political push to bring yeah. the prices down for those drugs. You, you hear it from areas in the Senate, uh, Bernie Sanders, I think, just calling for that in the last week or so. You've also got Medicare and Medicaid saying, we may not pay for some of these things, or the government say, may say, we want to renegotiate based on what we've already passed. Uh, with the laws to renegotiate some of these prices. Yeah, I think that's a fair point. And, and a lot of these stocks have been sleepers for a couple of years, but I think that they have enough demand in the weight loss drugs that even if they have to cut costs, they're going to generate enormous amounts of revenue from this, provided that nobody gets sick and we don't find out that there's you know, serious side effects. That it's that the next fin fin. Yeah, right, exactly. Tesla's recent updates about robotaxis and FSD open up the possibility of Tesla directly working with other automakers in ways that it hasn't since its early partnership with Daimler and Toyota. Any revenue from licensing FSD could help the automaker further invest in other ambitious projects such as new vehicles like the Roadster or even in areas unrelated to EVs such as energy generation and storage solutions. If you made it this far into the video, thank you. These videos take a lot of effort and time to make, so if you enjoyed them, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. This goes a long way in helping us grow. That said, back to the video. The arguably most critical aspect to licensing is data collection. Data is a vital component in improving AI-driven systems like FSD, as algorithms need vast amounts of real-world driving data to learn and improve. With FSD being used in many more vehicles, the diversity and volume of data that Tesla could collect would grow dramatically. And this data could lead to faster, more comprehensive improvements in the system, and this would solidify Tesla's position as a global FSD leader. You could say that FSD is Tesla's moat, but there are still some risks to it. The future potential of Tesla's FSD software depends on several factors, including technological advancements, the regulatory environment, as well as safety and public acceptance of the software. Several experts have noted that the widespread adoption of fully autonomous vehicles will be influenced by regulatory frameworks and government policies, and it might be difficult for Tesla to obtain government approval for its autonomous products. And even if Tesla gets the green light in the United States, what about Europe or China? It'll definitely face more trouble there. Because of this, while analysts at Deutsche Bank acknowledged the potential game-changing effect of robotaxis, they also noted that there are still many questions that are unanswered and it may be too early to tell if this move is good or bad for Tesla. Likewise, it's worth noting that the autonomous driving technology landscape is rapidly evolving and new advancements and updates will likely occur over time and some other companies could also solve autonomy, so Tesla needs to act quickly and start licensing what it has reached to get above the competition. Still, it'll likely take years before any other car company comes close to what Tesla has achieved. Based on what we currently have, Tesla's FSD technology is, no doubt, poised to generate a fortune through strategic licensing, and that's why we think it's the company's biggest catalyst right now. So, what do you think? Do you think Tesla's licensing deals will start this year? Let us know in the comment section. If you would like to know more latest updates about Tesla and the EV market, then go ahead and click on the next video on your screen. See you there.